Let's start importing from AutoCAD. We obviously clean the file first, open the project, and here we have our CAD drawing. The first issue is that the viewport is very slow, and the reason is that there are a huge number of objects in the scene, something that uh, Cinema 4D doesn't like at all. We therefore have to fix this. Select uh, all objects and use connect plus delete. Now the viewport spinning is very smooth. Now we are going to split all the components, plans, elevation and section. I rename all of the objects. And then I position all the plants on top of the other with the help of the snap tool. Then we position the elevation and sections. We move our drawing to the center of the scene and we are done. For such a complex project we can't think of just modeling everything with details right away. So we will start modeling some raw volumes first and then we will add all the details needed. Here on my map application I can see the entire three-dimensional building. Useful to get an idea of the raw volumes. We can start with this element here. Let's take a spline tool and trace over the CAD file by keeping the control key pressed so that it won't snap. Select the spline arc tool to add some curves to our spline. Now we can insert everything in the loft nerves, move it to the right uh, height, and duplicate the spline in order to obtain the vaults. Adjust the subdivision of spline and loft nerves, and then select loop option to close the top of the volume. We repeat the same process for every other volume, therefore I will uh, speed up the video here. Here is another object. We will use the same technique.
This volume is a bit trickier as the faces uh, are not planar. Therefore, same process as before, but we will also deform the splines in order to obtain the needed inclination. We will use the freeform deformer. and then use the current state to object command. Then proceed like before with the spliner tool. Of course, uh, there is a lot more going on the roof of the building, but we don't care, as we are not going to see that in our views. And here are our uh, row volumes. Once again, we are going to use the spline and spline arc tool to draw the various elements of the pavement. Now select the spline and then choose the command outline to create an offset of the spline. Continue like this to draw all the other elements. Once we have all our spline, we can insert them in a lot of knobs. Let's speed up the process for the other elements, as we are always use the same technique. Now we have a decent uh, prototype of our model. At this stage I always like to add some uh, basic shaders, either using Cinema 4D materials or V-Ray materials, just to get an idea of what is going on. Here I added the concrete material. Here are pebbles. some grass and concrete pavement. Before moving on with uh, all the details, we are going to optimize our geometry. First, let's uh, make the loft narps editable. Select all faces and invert normals if needed. Use the untriangulate tool with create and guns option activated to clean up the unneeded polygons. Now we fix a couple issues with the polygon pen tool, click on the line and drag over the next one. Let's add some cuts with the knife tool here. And now let's close the end of the volume with close polygon hole. Now the mesh looks clean, but if we activate point mode, we can see that there are many unnecessary points. We can fix this easily by using the mesh checking tab and select the first two options. Click on the arrow and delete. Now the mesh is uh, pretty much clean. We just add a couple more cuts with the knife tool and we are done. Now that the mesh is clean, we are going to model this window up here. Use the loop cut tool to add a few cuts here and here. 
Let's look at the plan to see where the window starts. Now select our polygons and use the extrude tool. Remember to disable the create caps option and choose an offset dimension. Select the line and choose the slide tool to move the line over here. Here we need to fix some polygon issues. Select the lines and choose Teach and Sew together with the Ship option. Now we use the Slide tool once again to move the segment and here we can move our geometry manually from the top view in order to align this face with the one of the volume next to it. Select the faces of the window and use the split command in order to separate our glass surface from the rest of the mesh. We will use a similar technique also to obtain all the other windows, so we can speed up the video. Now we will create this area over here, select the face and use the insert tool, formerly known as extrude inner. Now that we have our offset, we can give uh, a bit of extrusion. Now we can add these other details here, around the pillars. We could use the boolean, uh, but I prefer to use another technique. We are going to add a cut here, and then we use the plain cut tool with uh, six cuts uh, with the necessary spacing using the free mode in order to add some perpendicular cuts. Select the intersection points, use the bevel tool with some uh, subdivision, uh, a negative uh, minus 100% depth and corner and guns activated. Select the polygons and use extrude tool and there we go, we have our detail. Let's move on and see a couple of more modeling details. This could be trickier to model because of the bevels between the cylinders. We could use a quad modeling technique but in some cases it is easier using other techniques. Create our cylinders first and position them. Now use the volume builder and volume measure objects on top of each other. Then play with the settings until we obtain a nice bevel between the objects. For the rest you can just use traditional uh, polygon modeling, uh, so now we can speed up the process. If you wish to see the entire process, let us know and we can upload it uh, on our YouTube channel. We created this part here, then the top and the base. Finally we add the last details to complete our object. Small details like uh, fire hydrant are important and we have uh, plenty of them in the scene but uh, large scale details are just as important. I always try to model the building visible in the scene. So let's see our process. Start with Photoshop, select camera row and correct the perspective. Clean up the image from uh, unnecessary parts and fix some other perspective errors. Uh, you can use this image as a texture on a plane in Cinema 4D. Uh, we can add some loop cuts horizontally and vertically.
then select the polygons and start extruding some part of the facade. Repeat for all the other details. Now I will speed up the video. As we can see, uh, we have a raw volume with some depth uh, so that it can catch the shadow much better than a single plane. Here is the finished object. Let's make a quick render test. Here I have also another building. As you can see, we have nice shadows going on and it works uh, really well. Of course, it is not super accurate, but it will be good enough. Let's take a look at the complete model using the override material. As you can see, no matter how close we look, uh, we have always plenty of details and the background buildings works very well. 